To solve this data sufficiency question, we're going to go ahead and consider each statement separately first and then together if needed. So let's go ahead and let's consider the first statement alone. Uh, we're essentially looking for whether the first statement alone is going to be sufficient. Then we can rule out answer choices um, along the way. So the question asks, if x is an integer and 0 is less than x, which is less than 67, what is the value of x? The first statement says x is divisible by at least two prime numbers greater than two. So we're essentially looking for whether we can answer the question, what is the value of x with this information? If x is divisible by at least two prime numbers greater than two, let's consider a couple different uh, cases. If x is divisible by at least two prime numbers greater than two, let's suppose x is equal to three times five. Uh, 3 put times 5 is 15, and this satisfies uh, that it's between 0 and 67. Another case, though, is what if x is equal to 3 times 7? 3 times 7 is 21, uh, which is also between 0 and 67. In both of these cases, x is divisible by at least two prime numbers, uh, 3 and 5, and then 3 and 7. Um, so since we can't find one value for x, uh, given this information from this statement, this statement alone is not sufficient. Um, so we can actually rule out a couple options here. Uh, we can rule out answer choice A and answer choice D, because statement 1 alone is not sufficient. So let's go ahead and we're going to consider statement 2 alone and see if that is going to be sufficient for us. So considering statement two, statement two alone says square root of x plus one minus one is prime. Now it's gonna be easier, just like we did for the first statement, uh, to pick a couple choices um, for this value, a couple prime values. So let's look at some test cases. What if square root of x plus one minus one equals the prime number two. Since we're not given any restrictions on the prime number, it might be. Uh, if we go through and solve this, we have the square root of x plus one equals three. So x plus one will equal nine and x will equal eight. So that's one option. Uh, since 8 falls between 0 and 67, uh, this choice, this case, uh, actually works for us. Uh, let's consider another option. Suppose square root of x plus 1 minus 1 equals 3. That's also a prime number. That was our requirement for statement 2, that it's prime. If we go ahead and solve for x for this case, we have square root of x plus 1 equals 4, so x plus 1 equals 16, or x is equal to 15. This also satisfies the requirement that x has to be between 0 and 67. Now, since we can't find one definitive answer for x, we got multiple choices that actually are satisfied by both the statement and the given question. Uh, this statement alone is not sufficient. Uh, so we can rule out answer choice B. Um, answer choice B because statement two alone is not sufficient. So we need to consider whether these statements together are going to be sufficient, or if neither of them, even if they're together, are not sufficient. So let's go ahead and along with statement two, let's now add in statement one. Now we have a couple cases where uh, square root of x plus one minus one is prime. So let's go ahead and start there and then consider adding on to those different cases, now considering uh, statement one as well. So continuing with uh, statement one plus statement two, we're going to continue this process. Now, taking a look at these answer choices that we have here, 
Statement one says x is divisible by at least two prime numbers greater than two. x equal to eight does not satisfy that uh, because the only prime numbers it's divisible by are two. So we can actually just rule x equal to eight out. x equal to 15 we know is three times five and that's definitely divisible by two different prime numbers. So statement one is satisfied by this one. So let's go ahead and continue the process. Let's choose our next case, continuing on with the cases from statement two. What if square root of x plus one minus one equals five? In this case, let's go ahead and solve for x. So square root of x plus 1 equals 6. So x plus 1 equals 36. Right, x equals to 35. Now 35 is 5 times 7. So this value of x actually satisfies all of the conditions as well. It's uh, between 0 and 67 uh, as required in the question. It satisfies statement 2 because we chose it, uh, that this guy equals 5, a prime number. Uh, it also satisfies statement 1 because it is divisible by two different prime numbers greater than 2. So we actually now have two different cases that work even if we combine both statements. So x could be 15 and satisfy everything, but x could also be 35 and satisfy everything. So because of this, we can't definitively say um, what value x will be, right? If you remember, that's what the question actually asks, is what is the value of x? Since we can't decide on a definitive value because there are multiple that satisfy the question, um, the statements together are not sufficient to actually answer the question either. So in this case, we can eliminate um, answer choice C because both the statements together are still not sufficient. So our final answer choice is E.